Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthew, and Mary Tyler Moore. Hi, Rich. Hi, Daddy. You late? Yeah, no, I didn't get a chance to call. Is Mama mad? I don't know. She's in the kitchen talking to a man. Oh, anybody we know? Uh-uh. He has a mustache. He's a lawyer. A lawyer? Just because I'm late for dinner? <laughs> Laura? In here, darling. Do you take it off when it goes ding or ding ding? No, the ding just lets you know it's ready, and then it'll shut itself off. Hi, darling. Hi. Uh, darling, this is our new neighbor, Arthur Stanwyck, my husband, Rob Petrie. Oh, hi, Arthur. Hi, hi Rob. Oh. <laughs> hey, your, uh, your wife's been kind enough to instruct me in the operation of all my new mechanical devices. Oh, well, how's she doing? Well, she's been trying to teach me how to make a chicken roast itself while I'm out playing golf. I've got the same equipment in my kitchen, but I must say I'm thoroughly confused. Listen, I've never been able to figure out all these timers. You better let your wife do it. It's safer. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's a big price to pay just to get your uh, stove turned off. <laughs> How's that? Well, Arthur's not married. Oh, you're not? No, I'm afraid I'm a bachelor. Well, don't be afraid. Some of the most married men I know are bachelors. We just love it. <laughs> See, Arthur, are you... Engaged or anything? Oh, nothing. As a matter of fact, I'm so unentangled at the moment that next week I'm going to a bar association ball with my brother. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, no, no, not really. He's a rotten dancer. A big part? <laughs> well, I, I, his wife is an excellent one, and I, I take over for him. Oh. Well, I, I won't hold you two folks up any longer. Thanks for the course in stoves and water heaters. Well, listen, would you like to stay for dinner? Well, thanks, but I have a house full of dust to rearrange. Uh, may I have a rain check? Sure, you can cash it in tomorrow night or Friday if you like. Oh, I'd love it. May I call you on that? Please do. Thanks again. Bye. 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 Call us if you need anything. Thanks. He's kind of a nice guy. Very. What's a good-looking bachelor with a mustache doing living in the suburbs? Well, I asked him that. Not quite that way, of course, but uh, he said he's looking for a quieter way of life, sort of a change from the bustle of the city. Well, I hope he finds it. You know what I think he's looking for? What? A wife. Yeah, whose? Oh, well, don't... <laughs> I won't give him yours. Well, that's okay. Listen, darling, I know how you hate it, but would you mind if I took one more fling at matchmaking? What if I said no to that? I'll probably do it behind your back. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, go ahead if you want to, but I don't think that uh, he's her type. He's whose type? Well, Sally, of course. Oh, I agree. But then why bother about it? Well, I was thinking about my cousin Donna. Your cousin Donna? Yeah, she'd be just perfect for him, Rob. Are you kidding, honey? She's more imperfect for him than Sally is. This guy strikes me as being quite a live one. Well, Donna's a live one, too. Well, yeah, she's alive. <laughs> but this guy, he's a golf-playing lawyer that dances with a mustache. <laughs> you see, there's a lot more to life than just dancing, and I think Donna and Arthur have a lot in common. Yeah, like what? Well, like Arthur likes to live in the suburbs, and so does Donna. You'll admit that Sally hates the suburbs. She claims that she does. Besides, Sally once told me she hated men with mustaches, and Donna has always loved David Niven. Oh, good. That leaves Sally free to meet Arthur. <laughs> I'm going to call Donna. Call Sally. Donna! Call Sally. I'll, we'll call them both. Both? Well, I, can you think of a fairer way to do it? No, I guess not. All right, call them both and may the best lady win. <laughs> Honey, why don't you just forget the matchmaking? We'll have Arthur over Thursday or Friday. We'll give him a nice brisket of beef. No, we'll have him over Thursday and Friday. With two dinners? Yeah, that way he can meet them both separately and make up his own mind. That's great. I'll call Donna for Thursday, and then you ask Sally for Friday, okay? Hang up. What now? Why should Donna get a head start? <laughs> Well, honey, there's a psychological advantage at the first meeting. Oh, Rob, that's silly. What do you mean, silly? Do you ever hear of anybody falling in love on second sight? Oh, <laughs> now that's just ridiculous. Did you ever hear of anybody say, second come, first serve? <laughs> Rob, it doesn't make any difference at all. That's right, it doesn't, so I'll call Sally first. All right, you go right ahead, and I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> we'll be fair about it and flip a coin. Head 
heads. I win. Well, I mean... Uh, come on, you know heads is mine. Ever since we've been married, heads is mine. Oh. You sure you didn't used to take tails? I hate tails. I'm calling Sally, and I'm going to ask her for Friday, and then I'll call Donna and ask her for Thursday. Agree? Okay. Wait a minute. Oh, Ralph, what now? Now that we got Arthur's future all planned for him, you think we ought to call him and tell him? <laughs> Good idea. Boy, since I put up that new target, my aim is beautiful. You better cut it out. Mel's been complaining of headaches. You sure? <laughs> really? Ha, ha, ha! Oh! Oh, hi, Rob. Hi. Sal, what's your feeling about mustaches? Well, they should be worn under the nose. <laughs> and uh, women should definitely be discouraged from growing them. <laughs> now, I'll ask you one. What do I have in a good morning for a greeting? I'll get to it in a minute. Sal, tell me, how do you feel about living in the suburbs? Well, I'm not too crazy about them, but if I get a firm offer from a good-looking suburb, I might consider it. <laughs> hey, Rob, you got a guy for our Sal? Uh, yeah, you got suburb? I might have, Sal, but he lives in the suburbs and he loves it. All right, so I'll buy 100 pounds of crabgrass and convert. <laughs> no, she won't. You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Well, maybe you can, but the pig would be deaf. <laughs> hey, Rob, who is this farmer who is changing my whole mode of living? Well, he's a new, new neighbor of ours. He's a bachelor named Arthur Stanwick, and uh, Laura and I'd like to come over Friday night and meet him. Good, then I'll be there. Oh, suburbs. Yeah, I'd like to look out my window and see a little green. <laughs> Why don't you get an apartment in front of a stoplight? <laughs> so, doesn't it bother you at all that the guy has a mustache? No, just as long as they don't droop over his teeth. <laughs> Boy, you're fickle. You told me you could never go for a guy with a mustache. But that was last year. Next year, I'm accepting tattoos. <laughs> Boy, the guy that puts these corks in must be the same guy that puts lids on macadamia nuts. Why don't you use that new one, the one that goes like that? Well, there's no challenge in that one. Well, they should be here any minute now. Sure wish Sally was the one meeting them first. Oh, Rob, you're not going to start that now. I'm not starting anything. Will you please remember that this is not a contest? So I hope you're not going to do anything that would ruin Donna's chances of winning it. <laughs> but it's uh, not a contest. Oh, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mm, you mean I can't even lock her in the bathroom or trip her like Sally suggested? Oh, no. No. Oh, Johnny, would you get it? I'll be right out. Okay. And behave yourself. Or you won't trip her unless she trips me first. <laughs> Hi, Donna. Hi, Rob. Come on in. Nice to see you. Let me take your coat. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. It's supposed to be that way. I designed it myself. Oh, Jesus. Well, I've never seen anything like that. Oh, is that the, that all? Yes, yeah, that's all. Honey, Donna's here. Hi, I'll be right out. Don't rush, Laura. Well, how you been, Donna? Just fine, Rob. How's Aunt Martha and Uncle Edward? Well, actually, I don't see my parents much anymore. We don't have anything in common. Well, except maybe your grandparents. Actually, I could have more in common with my grandparents than my parents, genetically speaking. Hereditary <laughs> patterns often skip a generation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, ours did. <laughs> you still uh, taking harp lessons? I never took harp lessons. Oh, I, I, thought you, I thought you played some kind of instrument. Oh, that was the Cambodian Kapakalukia. That's, that's right, you're a Kapakalukia player, yeah. Well, isn't that something well, like a harp? Oh, no, not at all. Actually, a Kapakalukia is an East Indian milking funnel covered with goat gut. Oh, and then you just you kind of... Just... Yeah. <laughs> I see. Oh, oh G&E flat minor. No, I think that's Arthur. Oh, no, that's Arthur. <laughs> You mean the pitch? Uh -huh. E and E and E and J. Bum, bum, bum. I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, Hi, Arthur, Rob. how are you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, don't be sorry. It's an excellent year. <laughs> I'd 
like you to meet my cousin, Donna Palmer. Well, I'm very happy to meet you. Hello. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have these lovely hors d'oeuvres in the oven, and I do hate to burn them. Oh, and Laura, let me help you. No, no, no. You stay there and entertain Arthur. I know you're a whiz in the kitchen. <laughs> she really is a marvelous cook. Oh, is she now? Yes. She illustrated a cookbook. Yes, she draws the best food. <laughs> <laughs> she must do a boiled well, chicken. I well, I want you to sit down in this nice, easy chair here and make... Hey. Uh, wait a minute. Sit in the sofa, so I think you'll get more out of it. <laughs> well, uh, Donna, do you know that uh, Arthur's a successful lawyer? Oh, yes, I know. Uh, Laura told me so. <laughs> yeah, he's got his own ambulance. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, Donna, here's a psychologist, Arthur. She is? Well, I hope you're not nursing any grudges against lawyers. Oh, no, but in my work as a psychologist, I have had some rather heated discussions with members of your profession. Hey, that's wonderful. I beg your pardon. Well, I mean, you and Arthur have a little something in common there. What's that? Uh, pr uh professional antagonism, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, paternalism. Yeah. Actually, I enjoy discussions with my lawyer friends. Well, I hope we enjoy our discussion tonight. Oh, I'm sure we will. That's a beautiful stone. What is it? A rock. I found it in my backyard. <laughs> I have some great rocks in my yard. Oh, I'd love to see them. You see, I mount my own rocks. Did you mount this one? Oh, yes, I did. Uh, may I? <laughs> a beautiful job of mounting. Can you see with my glasses? Perfectly. Isn't that marvelous? They both have the same prescription. <laughs> you know, actually, I make a lot of my own jewelry. Well, I've always admired people who can work with their hands. I've never been able to. <laughs> oh, Laura, Laura, let me help you. No, that's all right. Oh! 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 oh, it's my fault. I'm just clumsy. You are not clumsy, yes, Donna. You're very graceful. She dances like a wind. Oh, Rob, why don't you just lock her in the bathroom? Arthur, would you like a glass of uh, wine? Thank you. Thank you, Rob. I'd love one. <laughs> yeah, how about you, Donna? Oh, me too. Oh. oh, well. Oh, well what? They both love wine. Isn't that compatible? Well, a votre santé. You speak French. Uh, a little. I, I picked it up from foreign films. You, you like foreign films? I love them. Don't you just hate subtitles? Oh, I despise them. They, they make me nauseous. Oh, me too. Oh, they both get nauseous. <laughs> what do you think of uh, Ingmar Bergman? Well, I find his symbolism a little too blatant. I'm afraid I have to agree. You know, the clock without hands in that wild strawberries dream sequence? <laughs> well, its meaning was so obvious. Oh, much too obvious. But you're the first person who's ever agreed with me. Arthur, have a little more wine there. No, 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 Arthur. You save your palate for my chicken. You know, a new set of screenings is starting at the museum. I know. I'm a member. You are? Yes. So am I. Isn't that a coincidence? Well, isn't it? Why don't they, a lot of people belong to museums. You don't have to be the same blood type exactly. <laughs> well, why don't you come and help me in the kitchen? Honey, we have guests here. I'm sure they can take care of themselves, darling. Let's us go check my chicken paprika, shall we? Oh, I just love chicken paprika. Me too. There's fingers. <laughs> Do you know if a grand illusion is scheduled? Oh, I think it is. Rob, what did you do with my ponchalita? Your what? My coat. Oh, poncho, the coat. Put ponchalita in the dance. I'll get it for you. Oh, no, no, no. You help Laura. I'll get it. You have a problem? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You, uh, need a chaperone, you just yell. No, sir. If there's anything I hate worse than subtitles, it's a chaperone. <laughs> Why did you do that? That hurts. Because you deserve to be punished. You behave just abominably. Well, you're winning anyhow. I don't know why I had to give him wine. Up till then, the only thing they had in common was rocks. Well, I hope you're not planning any more sabotage. Oh, now, you don't think I really tripped them on purpose? I'll reserve judgment until the evening is over. Can someone please let me out of here? What is it? Did you lock her in the bathroom? What? Oh, Rob, if that isn't the one. Donna, Will, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, you get rid of me. I'm going to have to go to the phone. And you know it. Donna, are you all right? Hang on, Donna. Rob, please, can you do something? Donna. 
Donna. Get Hold on, Donna. You stand back, Donna. Get out of the way. Get I want to. That's very clever. And Donna designed it herself. Well, you drive carefully now. She's one of my favorite relatives. Don't worry. She's in good hands. <laughs> well, goodbye, all. Goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> Oops. I got her. I... Oh, I'm so clumsy. Are you all right, Donna? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Bye, Rob. Good night, Bye. Donna. <laughs> all right, blame it on me. <laughs> what did you leave in the walk? <laughs> Leave anything in a walk. She probably tripped on her own sleeves. Oh. Well, I, Sally hasn't got a chance. Those two are better matched than we are. I think I'll call her tomorrow and cancel the whole thing. No, Rob. Everything's all arranged. Sally's coming over tomorrow night. Yeah, and they'll probably sit there the whole evening and just stare at each other. You think so? I mean, do you think so? <laughs> So the messenger boy says, what are you talking about? I just came to deliver a package. <laughs> That's the right punchline. Gee, you're wonderful. I told you, I know all the jokes. I'll tell you what, this time you just give me a punchline and I'll tell you the joke. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, just the punchline? Mm -hmm. Okay, here you go. Um, uh, all right, then give me a haircut. All right, then give me... Oh, okay, here's the joke. A drunk walks into a bar room and he says to the bartender, give me a scotch and soda. And then he drops his head down on the bar. The bartender says... I can't serve you. You're so drunk now, you can't hold your head up. So the drunk says, all right, then give me a haircut. <laughs> oh, wow, this guy is the greatest. I thought you said you were a lawyer. Well, I am, but as a kid, my idols were W.C. Fields and Fred Allen. No Clarence Darrow? No. Frankie Darrow. <laughs> well, how'd you get so interested in law? Well, somebody heard my jokes and sued me. I had to defend myself. <laughs> Oh, me. Hey, you're my kind of guy. Now, there's nothing I like better than a good comedy. More than foreign films and rocks? Oh, I have a wide variety of interests. Hey, you like rocks? I love them. Oh, me too. Emeralds, sapphires, rubies. <laughs> Boy, them's my kind of rocks. Oh, well, you're talking to a poor lawyer, not a rich jeweler. Oh, I wasn't suggesting that you bite them for me, counselor. I'm gonna bite them for you. <laughs> You're my kind of woman. This is out of the Oh, well, it was a wonderful dinner, Lauren. I hope you're not mad at us for running off like this. <laughs> no, not at all. But you know, it's not very often that I find a date who's a shooting gallery bug like I am. And the amusement park closes at midnight. Well, that's when the ducks go home. They're unionized. <laughs> listen, you two have fun. Oh, don't worry. We will. And listen. If you beat me at the shooting gallery, I'll pay your way to the exhibit right next to it. What's that? The Tunnel of Love. <laughs> Either way, I can't lose. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't either. He gets along with Sally just as well as he did with Donna, but it's like two different people. He seemed to really like them both, and they both seemed to like him. Yeah. Well, it's their problem. Let's get some sleep. You know, it's like that story about the man who was going to open a door. He didn't know which was going to come out, a lady or a tiger. Remember that story, darling? <laughs> oh! Oh! What'd you do that for? I just want you to know that I'm for my candidate, the tiger. <laughs> you sure Sally gave him her phone number at work? Honey, she gave him her phone number, her office phone number, her home address, and I think her zip code. <laughs> He spends two wonderful evenings with two wonderful girls and then doesn't call either one of them. I think he probably will in a couple of days. I just can't wait to find out which one. 
Why don't you call him and invite him over to dinner again? Three nights in a row, he'll think I'm after him. <laughs> Why don't you call him, darling? You're a man. I, what am I going to say to him? Well, invite him over to work in your hobby shop or something. Honey, I haven't got a hobby shop or something. <laughs> well, ask him over for some other manly reason. Uh, all right, fellow. Would you like to come over and shave with me? <laughs> Millie, I told her I'd help her hem a dress later this evening. Oh. It's him. I mean, Hi. Arthur Stanley. Hey, we were just going to ask you over for coffee. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to drop off a little something to thank you for those oh. two lovely evenings. Well, you didn't have to do that. You will stay for coffee, won't you? Oh, I don't want to bother you. No, no bother at all. None at all. I'll get the coffee. <laughs> I got Arthur. Okay. <laughs> I'm not interrupting your dinner, am I? No. No, we always have a little coffee and cake for dinner. <laughs> it's, uh, a diet is for its ruins your appetite. <laughs> well, I, I'm getting to be sort of a, a permanent fixture around here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Here we are. Well, that was fast. Yes, instant coffee. Oh, dear. Well, it's a wonderful world we live in. It certainly yeah, is. Oh, is it? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, there we are. Yeah. Uh, you should have waited for the water to get hot. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I really shouldn't have anything anyway. I have a date for dinner. Oh, you uh, do? Anybody uh, we know? Well, I doubt it. It's my ex-wife. Oh, your uh, ex-wife? Uh, did I say something to shock you? Uh, no, why? Uh, you're wiping the tray with the cake. <laughs> it's <a> sponge cake. <laughs> But, uh, what, what about your, your uh, ex-wife? Uh, oh, well, she just got into town and she phoned me, and so we decided to get together and talk over old times. She was my first, you know. Your first wife? Yes, uh, and, and my third. I married her twice. You've had two wives and three marriages? Oh, yes. None of them worked out. I have this, this bad, bad temper, you see, and... Well, I'm prone to hit people that I love. You, you, uh, hit, uh, hit your wives? Well, I have. Oh, I, I must be upsetting you people with my problems. No, no, this is not... No, it's very interesting. I've been, I've been going to the psychiatrist now, and, and I must say it's been very, very helpful. I hardly hit at all anymore. <laughs> well, uh, how about Donna and Sally? Oh, they're lovely girls. I like both of them. Well enough to hit or <laughs> to, what, uh, take them out again? Oh, yes, but that's why I won't. Now, you see, my psychiatrist has advised me never to take a woman out more than once until I've completely solved my problem. Oh, well, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, yes, it's no sense in hurting people you've grown fond of. No, no, no sense in that at all. I'd have asked one of them to that dance next weekend, but, uh, well, I like both of them too much. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I mean, I mean that, well, you, you know. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye to Sally and, uh, and to Donna for me. Yes, sir. Yes, we certainly will do that. Oh, if, if you know any other girls, I'd be happy to meet them once. Well, I'll really have to dash now to meet my wife. Oh. Oh, uh, oh don't, don't worry. That's, that's just a nervous habit. I don't like her anymore. Well, bye. <laughs> I know I still love you. <laughs> Darling, there are other ways of showing people you <laughs> love them. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, what'd you do? Oh, her. come on, I didn't well, even touch Well, you, you didn't touch? Come on, I put them up. Put them up. <laughs> <laughs>